Hi everyone and welcome to Unicoi County Public Library's Tech Savvy series. Uh, tonight's installment is computer or ba basic computer skills. Ha, Friday, long day. Um, and uh, the instructor tonight who's sharing her time and talents is Miss Stacy Haas, Mrs. Stacy Haas. She is with Goodwill Industries and um, she was with us last year, so I'm so happy to have her back this year. Um, during this live stream, please feel free to pop questions into the chat. I'm going to be monitoring that and then I can reach out to Stacy and she can answer your questions. For those of you who are unable to attend this live streaming or if you want to revisit it, it's going to be archived under the appropriate list on uh, Unicoi County Public Library's YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Stacy Haas. Thank you for being here with us tonight and we look forward to learning. Great. Thank you so much, Selena. Um, like she said, my name is Stacy Haas and um, I do work for Goodwill Industries of Teneva. Um, and I, I do a lot of different things. I wear a lot of different hats there. Um, my main job is I teach customer service and I love it. Um, but tonight I am going to kind of transition and um, teach some basic computer skills. And when I say basic, we are starting from the very beginning, um, but we will get a little bit more advanced as our meetings go on. So, so stay with me. Um, I am going to go ahead and share my screen with you. Um, here we are. Okay. Um, so tonight I'm going to start with the basic computer skills. Uh, we're going to continue that tomorrow. And then I'm going to go into um, just a little bit of basics of Microsoft Word and basics of uh, Microsoft Excel and um, also do some job readiness courses um, during my time with the Unicoi County Public Library. So for about three years, I taught um, job readiness classes, I taught employment classes, um, interviewing skills, what employers are looking for how to interview um, because I can promise you there is a right way and a wrong way um, to, to do that. So I'm excited to, to share all of that with you, um, but tonight we are gonna start with just the basics. So I'll go ahead and jump right in. And like Selena said, if you have any questions, please let her know so she can share those with me. Okay, so very basic. We have a desktop and a laptop. Okay. Um, so uh, I've, I've taught these classes, these computer classes, and, and always what I do is I give like a pretest when I give these classes. And um, these are some of the questions that are on there. Um, so what what is a desktop? What is a laptop? And um, I'll ask them what is the system unit, and um, that that's a commonly missed uh, question that I see. Um, so we we know that the tower is actually called a system unit. Many people that have sat in my classes have actually asked me which which is better, a laptop or a desktop, and I always tell them it's just your preference. Um, so. I personally like my laptop because um, I can take it anywhere with me. If I'm downstairs, upstairs, um, if I go off site, I can just pack it up in my backpack and take it with me. So it's just convenience. And um, I do have a desktop which just sits upstairs and um, it doesn't move, right? So you can actually, you have a touchpad with your laptop, but you can get a um, mouse to actually go with your laptop as well, because I know a lot of people prefer to use the mouse, um, as do I, but um, you basically, you have all the same features as a desktop, it's just not as big and as bulky um, as the system unit there, so. 
Moving on. Um, this is actually a, a really common missed question too. And you know, I, I'm sure you're probably thinking, okay, lady, like we we got it. This is a desktop, this is a laptop. Um, but I will point and I will ask, um, how do you turn on the computer? And the individuals taking the class always point to the monitor. And um, unfortunately that is incorrect. So um, if we're gonna turn the computer on and off, we go to the system unit. This is for your desktop, okay? Um, and to turn it on or off is right here. The monitor uh, would be just to turn the monitor. You're not turning the whole entire computer off. You're just turning the monitor on and off, just kind of make it go to sleep. Um, and that would be right here on your monitor. So uh, many people will choose this one, but computer power on and off is on your system unit. Down your monitor just to shut down, go to sleep for a minute uh, would be on your monitor. Okay. All right, so on your laptop, you have a few different ports on there. Um, the first one that it's pointing to here is your ethernet port, which is basically just if you wanted to get an internet connection, okay, you actually have to put a um, cord in there. So it's gonna connect to um, your laptop right here and go into your router or Wi-Fi modem. Um, so, Typically, nowadays, we're not using a cord to connect to the internet. We're just using Wi-Fi for that, but you do have that on your laptop. Um, then we have um, right here, I'll talk about USB in a minute, um, the HDMI port. So this would be used if you were to um, do a video or, or visual audio a uh, top deal from your laptop to your TV. Okay, that's typically what um, you would use your HDMI port for. And then you have your USB, which is, in my opinion, the most common. Um, and you have two of those there. So for example, what I would use my USB for is if I have a flash drive and I have downloaded, um, you know, documents, files, and we'll go over all that onto my flash drive here at my house. And I decide to go to the Unicoi County Public Library and open those. So I would then plug that into the USB port. So I'm showing you the laptop. Your um, desktop will also have that as well located on the system unit. So um, you could plug your flash drive into the USB port there. Um, another one, what I use it for is connecting my, um, my printer. So when I go to print, I actually, um, mine's not connected. Uh, I have to use the cord. Uh, so I use it for that. Um, I talked about the mouse. If you were to have a wireless mouse, then, um, on the back of the mouse, you it would pop out just like a little, um, uh, I don't even know what you call it but it, it is a little thing you plug into your USB so that you could use your, your wireless mouse there. So um, a lot of different things that you can plug in for your USB, for your laptop, desktop, um, but those are a few of the main ones. Okay, moving on. Okay, so keyboard keys. <clears throat> We, I've, I've pulled up Microsoft Word here. Um, I wanna make sure that you can see it. Um, okay, so now on my screen, I have a Word document. Um, I hope that you can see this as well. So just to show you, just to go over. Okay, great, thank you, Selena. Um, what some of the important keyboard keys are. Um, so we have the enter button that begins a new line or paragraph in your text, okay? So um, 
if it, let me insert this um, little tidbit right here. So I actually have classes on our Goodwill learning management system where um, you would learn Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, you would take these classes all online. At the end, upon passing, you would get a certificate, which is good, makes you more marketable to employers, um, you know, in, in your learning these the software um so one of the things i do with word is it's a um class on resume and it's building each assignment is building on itself okay so let's say that i'm having you type your resume okay and then if i put my name so i want to start a new line and start writing so i'm going to hit the enter button and like i said this is very basic you may already know all this but um if not you know you could be doing this along with me um I, this is how how we learn right by doing it so if you have word you can pull it up do it with me um and then after i type my name then i will just put my address in there. Okay. I want to start a new line or paragraph for my phone number. And obviously, um, your resume is not going to look like this, but you get the gist, you put your personal information there first for your resume. Um, and then my email. So I'm just, I'm, I'm tapping the enter button for me i have to um or or anyone you have to command word where you want it to start typing and it's going to start typing wherever the blinking cursor is so we see this little guy right here um that's where it, if if i move him up here then i've commanded word that this is where i want you to start typing um Notice that if I go back up here and I hit enter, it moves everything down. So I don't want to do that, right? Um, maybe did that by accident. I'm going to hit the backspace button where I'm just deleting what I just did. Okay. Um, that is one important keyboard key that we were going to go over. Um, let's go over caps lock and shift. Okay, the caps lock button on your laptop or your keyboard. I will just move this. If I uh, tap it one time, I have now said that I want everything I type to be capital letters. Okay, so I don't have to do anything now. It's just capital on my keyboard. And typically somewhere if you have caps lock, caps lock on, then it'll light up. So now mine has a blue light saying, hey, caps lock is on. Um, and obviously I see that as I top, everything that I have topped is now in capital letters. Okay, so if I want to remove that, all I have to do is tap caps lock again and it removes it. The shift button, so you have two of these on your keyboard. Um, I will say to uh, maybe in some of these classes, I can go over email etiquette. Um, I don't think I think I had a series on that last year or, or whenever it was. But, um, you know, it, it is important when we're emailing um, that we're capitalizing everything that should be capitalized. So for instance, your name, your first and last name, um, the letters of your first and last name have to be capitalized. So to do that, um, I'm going to tap the shift and I can't just hit it once and let go. I have to hold it in. So I'm holding in the shift button and putting an S and I let go and everything else is the way it should be, right? Lowercase. Okay, and then my last name, 
I just hold in the shift with an H. Okay, if I want to put an exclamation um, mark after my name, so you notice you have special symbols up above your numbers here um, at the top of your keyboard. So my exclamation mark is with my one. So how I'm going to get that, I can't just press the one because if I do that, then the number one appears. So I'm going to hold the shift down and tap one. And there is my special symbol. So if you see multiple ones on your keyboard, um, then you'll just want to hit the shift down. You can't just tap it. You have to actually hold it in and top it that way. Okay, so we have, we've kind of talked about um, backspace as well. So if I see, okay, I've gotten a little carried away here with typing my name. Um, I want to delete all of that. So backspace actually deletes everything to the left of my cursor. So wherever my blinking cursor is, and I hit backspace and just continue to hit it, it's going to delete everything from the left of my cursor. Okay. On your keyboard too, you also have arrows and these arrows it's just to navigate through okay um so if i and they're at the bottom of your keyboard here you have the left the right up and the down so i'm going to go left and i'm going to just tell my cursor where i want it to go so i'm in between my a's and my last name here um Let's say that for some reason, I want to delete one to the right of my cursor. Okay, the delete button deletes everything to the right of my cursor. Um, I just feel the need that I need to go over um, what the delete button actually does. So, so backspace is to the left and then the delete button deletes everything to the right. Okay. And then our arrow keys just kind of navigate through. Um, I can go down, up, left, right. I'm just commanding word where I want it to go. Okay. I hope all that makes sense. I'm going to move on with my important keys. And if I go too fast for anyone, um, please let me know that as well or if you have any questions or just say hey slow down um or do that again i would be happy to okay you're doing good right now just checking in and letting you know great thank you okay so um moving on with our keyboard keys we have the tab button and this moves the cursor to the next tab stop um Typically what we use this for is starting a new uh, paragraph. Okay, so with my Word document, if, um, you know, this, this here is my resume, but I could also call it my cover letter if I wanted to. So, and right now I'm just hitting enter. Um, that's why my cursor kept going down. I just kept hitting enter. So. If I say, okay, I want to type out a cover letter, write it, I'm gonna tab, just hit the tab once to indent my cover letter here. So did you see how my cursor then moved to the next tab stop? I'm gonna hit backspace. Okay, now it's in line. And I hit the tab, which is on the left of my keyboard. Okay, I'm just gonna hit it one time. And then I'm going to start typing my cover letter. Um, you can tab again and again and again. Um, it's just going to keep going to the next tab stop. Okay. And then if I've said, oh, I got a little carried away, too many tabs, um, just hit the backspace there. All right. <clears throat> 
I think that's the end of my important keyboard keys. So um, it's just a lot like the, the caps lock and the shift. All this is very important to know the enter, um, especially you know when you're you're typing out an email. If let's say that you are trying to look for a job, okay, and you're emailing the hiring manager, um, how we present ourselves in our typing and our text is very important. So, am I capitalizing things that need to be capitalized? Am I um, starting a new paragraph is, or am I jumbling it all up together, right? Um, I, I did see the other day, you know, we're, we're learning new things constantly, um, all the time. So, and I'm trying to always read up and, and be up to date, right? Because it changes frequently. So I don't know if I'm just like super old school, if I'm going to kind of show my age here, uh, just a little bit, but it's a habit of mine whenever I'm typing to hit the space bar twice after um, I end a sentence. Uh, I don't know if anybody out there is like me and does that, but I always hit it twice because that's how I learned that that we were supposed to do and then I read that that is not necessary and it, like just one um is is perfectly fine that was for typewriting um era <laughs> so I'm like whoa I'm not I didn't learn on a typewriter um I know I learned on a, a desktop keyboard all that but uh I did learn that we were supposed to space twice after but Anyways, you don't have to do that. Just once is sufficient, but because it's a habit of mine, I still do. Anyways, just threw that out there for um, for anyone who wanted to know. That was free. You're welcome. Okay, moving on. Okay, so common mouse pointers, and I will add. I will ask many people, I'm like, did do you know the difference? Did you know that there were different mouse pointers? I'm like, no, uh, I don't really know if anybody pays attention to that, but there are different mouse pointers. So the arrow is just our normal select. Okay, so you see right now, um, my mouse is an arrow and that's just kind of what it says. So we also use this to open a file or a folder, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. So then it doesn't always stay as an arrow. So my mouse pointer actually will change and we'll turn it into a, like a hand with a finger um, whenever I can select a link or um, let's see, not there that uh, did you see my mouse pointer change up here in the I hope you can see it um so if I'm going to insert a new text so if I was to change this then I could left click with my mouse and then I can start typing again um let's go to my word document Okay, so right here, notice my mouse is like the eye, right? Um, and it's just saying that I can insert text in this spot right here. Um, so, and then it changes when I just randomly just click. Okay, my mouse is still in an arrow. So, I want to show you. Okay, so a if I want to click on a link to send me somewhere else, then it will turn into a hand with finger, right? So I've clicked somewhere else. It is taking me to a new place. Okay. Okay, I don't know if anybody out there is like, huh, 
that was something different. That was something new that I didn't didn't know. Or if you're like, yeah, we we've known that for quite some time. Uh, but I do. I see a lot of people who were like, I had I had no idea that they even changed. Um, so there we go. Different mouse pointers. Okay. I have two videos that I am going to show. We're going to talk about navigating windows and managing files and folders. I do want to show these a little disclaimer here. They are from um, the website gcflearnfree.org. So that is actually a Goodwill that has put this on. And if, if um, a little tidbit about Goodwill too, we are all different. So uh, I know if, if many people think that Goodwill is just Goodwill, right? And, and we all do work under one umbrella of Goodwill International, but we are each our own. Um, so like I said before, we are Goodwill of Teneva. Um, so we serve East Tennessee and Southwest Virginia. If you go to Goodwill in Kentucky, that's not us. Um, Goodwill in Florida, that's not us. They are their own Goodwill with their own mission um, that they do, okay? So this is a separate Goodwill that has put on all of these videos and they are awesome. So they're like just a couple of videos. You can learn anything and everything you want to just by accessing these free videos. So what I have here is navigating windows and then managing files and folders. Um, if you cannot hear it when it starts, um, Selena, please let me know. You don't hear that? No sound, just captions. Okay. Let me see. I apologize. Let me share my sound with you. If you're just getting started with Windows, learning how to navigate the interface is a great place to start. Let's take a look at the desktop, which is the screen you see here. It includes a desktop background, also known as your wallpaper, and the taskbar at the bottom of the screen. The taskbar is where you'll find shortcuts to some of the applications on your computer, as well as the Start button. In most versions of Windows, you can click the Start button to see a list of applications, files, and settings. But if you're using Windows 8, you can click the Start button to return to the Start screen. The taskbar is also where you'll find File Explorer, which allows you to view and open files and folders. For now, I'm going to close the window by clicking the X. Let's check out more features on the desktop instead. The desktop is the main workspace for your computer. To open a program, file, or folder, just double-click the icon. Each time you want to open something, it will appear in a new window. You have the ability to move windows by clicking and dragging the top of the window. When you're done, just release the mouse. If you have more than one window open at a time, you can quickly switch between them by clicking the icon for that window on the taskbar. Almost all windows allow you to maximize the window so that it fills the entire screen. Just click the button here. Click the button again to return the window to its original size. When you're finished, closing the window is easy. Just click the X. That covers the basics. Now that you know your way around Windows, you can start taking advantage of everything it has to offer. Okay, so I like to show videos just because I am a very visual person too. Um, and just for example, so the other day, my um, printer kept saying, replace drum. Okay, so I contacted my employer. I said, hey, I need a new drum. While we're at it, let's go ahead and get a new toner. And they were like, okay. So I get the drum um, and I work primarily from home. So my printer's here and I'm like, I've replaced the drum, but it's not working. I have no idea 
you know, what, what in the world is going on? So I Google it because Google is my best friend. If we don't know something, we just Google it, right? And so I'm reading, I'm reading and everything I'm reading, I'm doing, and I'm like, ah, it's not working. So I just got on YouTube <laughs> and I just put in there, you know, how to reset because it said, what I did read was that you had to reset the drum after you replaced it. So I just didn't know how to reset it. So I just watched a video and I was like, oh, that's simple, right? Um, so if we don't know something, we I can read about it and I'm like, okay, I kind of understand. But when I have a video that shows me, um, it helps me learn a little bit better that way. So I will also say that the classes that I have online on our Goodwill Learning Management System, um, you do have reading material that you have to read through, but then there's a video of what you just read. So I think that that is definitely helpful. And then you have an assignment after that. So not only do you read it and you see it, but you're also doing it. So a lot of different learning styles there. But anyways, um, so learning windows, let me go back. And then we'll, we'll watch this over the video over files and folders. In the navigating window, she had talked about File Explorer. And um, I, I'm sure that many people, because this is another thing I would tell people, okay, now open up File Explorer. And they're all over their desktop, like, I don't know, is that the internet? Um, you know, they're just going around and I'm like, I bet you didn't know that there was a name for this because we just look at it and like, that's the manila folder, right? Um, and I open it up. And there's all my files, but actually has a name and it's File Explorer. So when you open it up, your documents, your um, pictures, your downloads, everything is there. So let's go ahead and watch this one. Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. Understanding how to work with files and folders is an important part of managing the information on your computer. As you accumulate more files on your computer over time, you'll need to create new folders to help keep things organized. To create a folder on your desktop, right-click, select New, Folder, then type a name for your folder. And if you want to, you can rename the folder at any time. Right-click the folder, then select Rename. The folder name will be highlighted. Just begin typing to rename the folder. You can even create folders within other folders to organize things further. Double-click a folder to open it. Once the folder is open, you can create another folder inside it by following the same steps as before. Just right-click, select New, Folder, then give the folder a name. And once you have some folders, you can begin moving files into them. For example, I can move one file by clicking and dragging it onto the icon where I want it to be stored. Or I can move multiple files by clicking and dragging my mouse to select the files, and then clicking and dragging the group onto the icon where I want them to be stored. If you want to remove some clutter from your computer, you can delete files and folders you don't need. Just click and drag the file or folder onto the Recycle Bin icon. Moving files or folders to the Recycle Bin won't permanently delete them. It's just sort of like temporary storage for the things you know you want to delete later. Then, when you're sure you want to permanently delete the files and folders, you can empty the Recycle Bin. Right-click the Recycle Bin icon, then select Empty Recycle Bin. All of the files will be permanently deleted. With a little bit of practice, you'll get the hang of managing files and folders in no time. Okay, so like she was saying, with a file, 
So if I'm working on a Word document and it's something for my customer service class, if I've created different scenarios or, or whatever, and I save that file as um, customer service scenarios, then just to kind of help keep myself organized, I may create a folder. So like I said, I wear many different hats. So if I have on um, a customer service teaching hat, then I'll put everything in my customer service folder. Um, so that's why it's just easier for me to find. Um, if I'm working with digital skills, then I'll put all of my digital skills files into that digital skills folder. Um, so then when I open up that, when I click on that folder, all of my uh, files would be in that one folder. Um, I hope that makes sense. It's, it's just helpful for organization instead of um, just having a whole list of documents and, and easier to find, right? Um, so if I have like an employment class and I'll put all my employment stuff in that folder. So um, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we have popular internet browsers here. And in the next class too, um, which is tomorrow. So if you can join, please join. I'm gonna talk a little bit about internet safety and um, actually have some um, videos from gcflearnfree.org to show that is helpful with internet safety because we do a lot of stuff on the internet now, right? And it's just really important to, to stay safe. And I mean, honestly, I, I know many people who are very, you know, cautious and very smart with um, what they do on the internet, but still have had, you know, gotten hacked or, or whatever. So it's important um, that we remain safe on the internet. So until then, these are some popular internet browsers. We have Firefox, Google Chrome, which is what I am using right now. And um, which is what I, that's, I mean, that, that's all what I use is Google Chrome. Um, and let's see. Okay, so I'll stop there. Firefox and Google Chrome are both downloadable browsers, uh, which means that they don't come pre-installed on your laptop, okay, or desktop. Um, I have Windows um, laptop, so what I have is Microsoft Edge. So if I, you know, pull something up in a new window, it's just going to default um, to Edge, okay. Um, and I'm sure everyone remembers <laughs> the E with the little like ring around it there, uh, which is the old windows. And then we have the Safari window. So if you have an Apple phone, um, an iPhone, then you're familiar with the Safari internet browser. Um, if you have an Apple laptop or a desktop, you know, a MacBook, um, then you would have the Safari on there as well. But Google Chrome and Firefox, you can download. They're safe, um, fast. So yeah, moving on. OK, the desktop. Um, and then the video that we watched, you kind of went over this. So we have desktop, which you you can change um, the picture on your desktop, um, make it a snowy mountain or a picture of your families or, or whatever you wanted to download a picture from the internet and put it as your background, um, just preference there. So then we have the taskbar down here at the bottom. And, um, you know, uh, I think you can see mine. I hope you can. Um, but I have I have put these on here, or if you have something open, that will be down here, like um, you know my Zoom um, I've had open, and here Microsoft Edge is open. But when I actually click out of those, they will go away. 
but I have put on my desktop, or I'm sorry, my taskbar, uh, my email, File Explorer, Chrome, just some stuff that I use frequently, okay? Um, there was some stuff that I didn't need that was on here. Um, so let's see. Well, so that's wanting me to pin to taskbar. So basically like save it to, oh, nope, to my taskbar. <clears throat> but I don't want to. Anyways, you have your start menu. And we'll go into more detail with our start menu um, with Windows, like where this is basically where if I was to tell my laptop, okay, I need you to um, go to sleep or I need you to shut down. Um, and basically, mine will probably say you need to update. Yeah. So here I went to start um, and then the power, if I click on it then mine is telling me to update and restart or um, update and shut down or just go to sleep. So um, typically I tell it to go to sleep, might need to tell it to update and shut down. That is important uh, for the updates. Uh, it's kind of like a do as I say, not as I do, right? Um, so many different things that you can find in your star if, um, you know, your apps, basically. Um, so if I'm working in Microsoft Teams, I want to open that up um, with, with my work. Um, if I want to find my camera, um, then that is on here. Calendar, Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint is here on my start. So your start button has all your apps, everything um, on your laptop. And I keep it went away. Okay. Um, and these on your desktop are called your desktop icons. Another thing, you know, you, you look at this, but I would tell individuals, um, open up an icon on your desktop and they're just kind of looking around. So any of these, um, just any icon. Okay. Moving on. So taskbar controls um, is kind of magnified here. Down at the bottom right is where you will find all of this. Okay, so your battery life, um, your Wi-Fi connection, if you're connected to Wi-Fi, um, if you need to connect to Wi-Fi, then you'll do that down there at the bottom of your taskbar, your volume, <clears throat> you need to make it louder, um, quieter, your um, date and time. And I mean, you can actually change that when I first got this laptop. Um, it's new. I, I am coming off of a um, maternity leave. So I just had a baby eight weeks ago. And um, while I was out, my old laptop just kicked the bucket there. Um, and so they ordered me a new one um, and the time and the date were wrong. So went in there and changed it um, to our correct time zone. And that's where you would do that, okay? Um, notifications would also be down there. Um, I have 15, uh, so it would tell you basically like someone sent you an email or um, you know you downloaded this or, or whatever, it's what you're, notifications would be about. Okay, so also too, um, one of the things that is on the pretest is I will ask people to mute their sound with just one click. And the way that we do that instead of just, you know, sliding is you just click your little megaphone here and it mutes it, okay? Um, instead of worrying about sliding, do I go to zero? Um, do I go to 100? <laughs> what do I do? Um, just one click of the button there will mute your, your sound. Okay, so this shows that, hey, I'm connected to Wi-Fi. I'm good. Wi-Fi not connected. Also, um, if you're not connected, it'll show just like a, a circle um, and 
let you know that you're not connected to Wi-Fi as well. Okay, moving on. All right, ease of access. So I show this, um, I always ask people, has anybody ever used this? <laughs> and uh, they're like, mm, nope, um, not really. So, and I'll just be honest with you. I have not, um, but I will show you. So, and this may be learning for both of us because I have not even pulled it up on this new laptop, but here we go. So this, I go to the start menu, then I'm going to go find my settings. And this is helpful, I will say, in, with your, um, all your apps here, they're in alphabetical order. So um, I'll just go to my S with settings, click on it. Okay. And then okay. So if I'm I can just type in um ease of access brightness setting, um, ease of access keyboard settings. Um, so basically what this would do too is let's see if I I can make things bigger. Um so if I say, okay, that is way too small. I need to make, you know, this these words bigger. Then that's basically, I command it to do that, okay? And then I also have to hit apply if I want to change that. So uh, it makes everything brighter if you need it to be um, your, your mouse pointer. So if your mouse pointer size, you're like, I need to be able to see that better, um, then see how big I made my mouse there. Um, so ease of access is where you would come to do that. Like I said, this is something that I personally don't use, but it is there um, to make your life easier if need be. Um, Okay, um, text cursor, bigger, um, magnifier. You're just, it's just making things easier for you to read, um, brighter so you can see it. Okay, so one more time, I will show you. So I'm going to my start button and then I wanna scroll down to settings. Okay, and then I'm just typing in ease of access. So mouse settings. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so turn on mouse keys to use the numeric keypad to move the mouse pointer. So a lot of different things that, that you could do that you could explore um, with the ease of access. If you say, you know what, I do need things to be a little bit bigger um, because that's just way too small of a mouse, then that option is there for you. Okay. So here is another thing to show you of how to get there. Alrighty. So we have file storage. So where in the world do I store all these files that I create. Okay, so we remember what a file and a folder is, right? What the difference is. A file, if I'm working on a Word document and then I save that one document as a file. Um, a folder, I've created this folder to put all my files into. So the computer hard drive would just be like, if I'm just I'm working on my laptop, just mine at home, and I save it to my documents. Okay, so when I do that, when I open up my laptop and I go to find it, it will be there because it's on my laptop, okay? I have not saved it anywhere else. I've just saved it to my computer hard drive. So if I want to go to the Unicoi County Public Library, 
<laughs> which I will do quite frequently. Um, I am not going to have what I'm not going to have my file there. Okay. Because I've saved it just to my computer hard drive. Um, if I have a flash drive right here, um, jump drive, USB drive, whatever you want to call it, then I have that. I can save it as um, typically what pops up when I put it in is removable disk is what it would be to save it to. Um, and so I would just save it to my remo removable disk there. And then I would have it on it. Take it to the Unicoi County Public Library, stick it into the HDMI port. No, the USB port. And then I would be able to open it up there. Okay, or another option is the cloud. And this is typically what I use, what I am um, showing you this presentation on is everything that I've created from my Google Drive. I like it just because it doesn't matter what computer I get on, all I have to do is sign into my account and it's there. Um, so I don't have to worry about, do I have my flash drive? And I can't tell you how many times I have been somewhere different to teach and I don't have to worry about making sure I take my laptop or making sure I have that flash drive with me. All I have to do is sign in to my account with my username and my password and all of my documents are there. So it just gives me peace of mind um, because it's very stressful when you know you get somewhere ready to teach and you don't have a PowerPoint to go by. There was one time last year um, that I was teaching uh, for Selena and my computer decided to update at the time. Um, and so I didn't have, I didn't have anything. So I had to teach just off of memory. I'm, that was very stressful. Uh, so it's just nice whenever you can go somewhere and you have, she remembers that. And she's like, uh, <laughs> let's make sure that you update that laptop after <laughs> class. <laughs> um, but uh, we can, I actually did a series on that last year, I'm pretty sure, um, with Google Drive. And then you also have OneDrive, Dropbox that does the same. You just sign in to your account and all your files are there. So I um, actually started working a little bit with the Microsoft Teams and we've started using that uh, within our organization at Goodwill. And so, you know, that, that's the same thing so that everybody can see, you know, what everybody's working on too. And uh, we can just kind of share it that way um, instead of emailing with attachments, everything is just there for everybody to have access to, right? So it's helpful, it's easy. Um, I like easy. So uh, the cloud definitely does that. Okay, I'm actually going to stop right there uh, for for tonight and see, Selena, does anybody have any questions for me or did I just do an awesome job? <laughs> it appears that you have done an awesome job. <laughs> um, and you did. It's always delightful to have you here. And um, I always um, learn something even it, people who are digital natives or they've been using technology for a long time, there's always that key, that shortcut that you didn't know exists. So um, I'm always picking up on something and, and you're just lovely to have one here teaching. And, and as I mentioned before, 
they can revisit this um, and feel welcome to come into the library because we will set you up on a computer and help you access this content as much as you need to if you're really looking to build those computer skills. And speaking of that, Ms. Stacy Haas is joining us tomorrow, January 22nd at 1 p.m. on Facebook Live to teach um, another installment of the Tech Savvy series and that is building computer skills. So if you like what you've seen here tonight and you want to grow more confident in your technology skills, then please tune in tomorrow or check out the archives on our Facebook page or YouTube channel. So that's it for uh, this installment of our Tech Savvy series. I hope that you learned something. I sure did. So have a great night and thank you and tune in next time. Thank you, Stacy, for being here. Thank you so much.